I've said this before and I'll say it again. Red flag laws are some of the most dangerous bits of legislation being proposed today. They are a massive step into being punished for having a difficult time in life and also being punished for your thoughts. The way these laws are written tends to discourage people from getting help and instead shut down for fear of losing their rights. And it just so happens that at Joe Biden's recommendation, the U.S. Department of Justice has released their model legislation for red flag laws across the U.S. We'll break it down after this. The CMMG Banshee is one of the coolest AR style pistols in the game. With its innovative features like the radial delayed blowback system and rip stock and brace, it's pushing the PCC and AR pistol market forward. They're available in 12 different calibers like 9mm, 300 blackout, and even 5.7. And you can get 10 different Cerakote colors, which means your gun is bound to be unique like our Banshee 300 pistol chambered in 10mm with its bazooka green Cerakote. Thing looks awesome. No matter which way you want to go, the CMMG Banshee has you covered. To learn more, head over to CMMG's YouTube channel and tell them TGC sent you. Welcome back to The Gun Collective. My name is John Patton, and you are watching The Fight for Gun Rights. This is a show all about Second Amendment news, and we would love it if you got subscribed, followed us on Instagram, or just left a like on this video. That always helps. I really genuinely do appreciate it when you guys give a crap about what we do. Before we get into the red flag law stuff that we're going to cover today, I want to encourage you to go watch our last video that covers the new ATF pistol brace proposed rule and submit a comment in opposition to that BS. Go watch that video if you have no idea what I'm talking about. You need to know, it's a big deal. Now, like I said in the opening, we are looking down the barrel of some of the most dangerous legislation to be considered by our state and local governments. The basic idea of a red flag law is similar to many other nonsensical laws put forth. They portray the government as the ultimate solution to fixing mental health problems, but buried within that legislation is gun control. They even have wordplay going on with the name, Extreme Risk Protection Orders. If you guys have been following along, I've been talking a lot about manipulation. This name does that yet again. Extreme risk implies that something very bad is definitely going to happen, and protection implies that the law is indeed going to protect someone. That must be some kind of space magic, because laws don't stop crime. Anyway, in the DOJ guidance for red flag laws that was put forth on June 7th, they lay out two different variants. The first is the warrant variant. I'll read through their description of this. The warrant statutes provide an immediate basis for law enforcement to seek court orders temporarily preventing individuals in crisis from accessing or possessing guns. However, standing alone, these warrants do not provide an ongoing prohibition against such persons' possession or acquisition of firearms and do not provide a basis for entering those persons into the National Instant Criminal Background Check System and corresponding state firearm background check systems as individuals prohibited from possessing firearms. So they strip you of your guns, but it doesn't go into the background check system and it's not ongoing, but they can do it right away. The other type of red flag law is the order type. Again, from their website, the order statutes provide for ongoing prohibitions of firearms possession and acquisition and a basis for entering dangerous individuals into the background check systems as ineligible to possess firearms. However, their design may require a law enforcement officer to initially present the order to the dangerous person and ask him or her to surrender his or her firearms. If the person does not comply and the firearms are not in plain view during the encounter, a second step may be required in which law enforcement officers go back to court and secure a search warrant to look for and seize the subject's firearms. The delay may inadvertently give the subject advance notice and time to hide the firearms or potentially use them to seriously injure or kill someone before the police can return with a search warrant. So this law requires law enforcement to be involved to ask the person to hand over the guns, but the cops can take them anyway. They can come back and take them. And this would go into the background check system. And guess what? The model red flag law legislation is a combination of both of these aforementioned piles of garbage. Let's go over it, shall we? 
Section one is called Extreme Risk Protection Orders, and this lays out the definitions in play here. Petitioner, which is basically who is red flagging you, could be any of the following. A law enforcement officer or agency, including an attorney for the state, a family member, a member of the household that isn't part of the family, so your roommates, or maybe other family that isn't direct family, I don't know. So basically your roommates, someone you're dating, can red flag you, a healthcare provider, a school official, or basically anyone else that the state decides to toss in there. They left a blank section like, fill in your own tyranny crap here, right? <laughs> the term respondent is the person being flagged. This section also lays out two different types of orders. Section two is the first type of order known as the emergency ex parte order. For reference, ex parte hearings do not have to involve you. So if you're being red flagged, this could happen without your knowledge. This section starts with the basis for order in section A. This lays out that the court will make a decision on the red flag situation and potentially strip someone of their guns in very quick fashion. Section B covers the content of the order. It says the order shall prohibit the respondent from possessing, using, purchasing, manufacturing, or otherwise receiving a firearm, order the respondent to provisionally surrender any firearms in his or her possession or control, and any license or permit allowing the respondent to possess or acquire a firearm to any law enforcement officer presenting the order or to a law enforcement agency as directed by the officer of the order, yada, 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 and inform the respondent of the time and place of the hearing under section three to determine whether he or she will be subject to a continuing prohibition on possessing and acquiring firearms. Ugh. The way I interpret this is that you have to give up your guns and are barred from everything besides thinking about a gun. I don't know how they plan to enforce such things. Under the search and seizure section of section two, it says in longer terms that if the court decides they want to, they'll come take your guns and they can also search other places where you might have had access to guns. So not only will they take your lawfully owned items, they will strip your family and friends of their firearms as well if you could have had access somehow. The last section of section two lays out the time frame by which this would happen. Section three is called order after hearing. Subsection A lays out that this is very similar to the top of section two, and in addition, the order will stay in place for up to a year or whatever arbitrary time frame the state would decide. There's just, hey, do whatever you want. It can last forever. It has the same prohibitions as the last section. Subsection B says this order should be based on a preponderance of the evidence, which is the lowest standard possible, or other as defined by state law. That the respondent is indeed a danger to themselves or others. It also states that the court may issue a psychological evaluation, including voluntary or involuntary commitment. So not only could you be red flagged, but during the red flag process, you could be involuntarily committed, which bars you from possessing guns for life, if I'm not mistaken. Nice how they just kind of slid that in there. Oh, hey, we could involuntarily commit you if we want. <laughs> Sucks for you. Subsection C lays out search and seizure, AKA the anti-Fourth Amendment section. This, again, in longer terms, lays out that the court can come take any guns to which you might have had access, and it doesn't have to be in your own home. It also lays out that if they try to take someone else's guns during this process, they can provide an affidavit for promising to safeguard the guns against access to the respondent, aka you, if you are red flagged, but that can only happen after they stole your stuff. It also lays out a section where the states can add their own versions of tyranny. They could just shove more crap in there if they want. Hey, have fun with it, right? Subsection D lays out the time for the hearing in service. I'll summarize by saying that this is the time frame by which you are going to get stripped of your rights and freedom, and it basically says they can do whatever the hell they want. Subsection E is the termination and renewal of orders section. Section one of that says a respondent would have the option to file a motion of termination and would have to prove that they are no longer posing a threat to themselves or others. 
It's not assumed, you have to prove to the court. It also says that the petitioner, the person who started this crap, can seek renewals at any time, and there is no limit to how many times they could do that. And this section also states that if the respondent fails to show up or be served in any relation to any of this crap, renewal or beginning hearing, the court can proceed however they want. Section 4 lays out that if you get red flagged into the sort of Section 3 stuff, it gets reported to the National Instant Check System and your state background check system. So no matter what, it's getting reported. Section 5 lays out penalties for violations. This says that you can't file an application with knowingly false info. So this is sort of protecting against abuse, I guess. You can't possess guns if this is ordered against you and that it is illegal to provide access to a firearm to someone that's been red flagged if you assured the court it would be totally fine. Phew. So that, that is a lot to digest, right? That is a lot. The first thing that comes to my mind in reading through all of this is that it's all very specific to firearms. That's interesting because if this really was about preventing people from being a danger to themselves or others, it would not be specific to guns because guns are not the issue here, right? It's somebody being a danger to themselves, according to this. So why is it specific to guns, right? As I'm sure you could already figure out, this isn't about anything besides control. I would also like to point out that the red flag laws are completely unnecessary because pro-freedom options like hold my guns exist. For reference, that's a non-legislative, completely voluntary program for storing your firearms in times of crisis or better yet, personal need like deployments, and it violates exactly zero of your rights. Isn't that wonderful? I'll make sure we put a link in the description so you guys can check that out. Beyond that, as I'm sure you guys might agree, legislating against people in crisis does absolutely nothing to help them. Notice that all of this, I read through it all, notice that there are no provisions for state or federal assistance in mental health or anything of the sort. This is about punishing people for having a difficult time rather than helping them all under the guise of protecting the public. Don't worry, the government is coming to save you whether you like it or not. As per usual, I wanna hear from you guys on this one. Are you in favor of these laws? Why or why not? Sound off in the comments below and let's talk about it. Also, if you don't mind, please hit the like button. That would be great. And share this video with your friends on all of the social media platforms. We post this everywhere. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, etc. Share it with your friends so we can make sure that people are up to date on the nonsense coming out of DC. If you haven't yet, be sure to follow us and stay subscribed. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.